I'm angry and I'm sad all at the same time. We definitely don't want to be MIA. Wisconsin now, where three days of protests have taken over the state capital of Madison. No charges should be brought against Officer Kinney in the death of Tony Robinson Jr. This is politics and not justice. No charges. A Madison police officer cleared of wrongdoing in the shooting death of Tony Robinson. Now a community deeply shaken fights for change. Our live team coverage is throughout Madison with Valina Jones downtown where Tony Robinson supporters are marching. And Matthew Simon at Willie Street where Robinson's family spoke a short time ago. But first, News Street's Jess Garp was in the room as the Dane County DA announced the reasons behind his decision. Jessica? Well, the entirety of the explanation from the district attorney today took about 26 minutes, but it carried the weight of months of the investigation and years of perspective. Dane County DA Ishmael Ozan, the state's first black district attorney, set the stage for his decision, saying his life experience led him not to make his decision lightly. I am the son of a black woman who still worries about my safety from the bias of privilege and violence that accompanies it. But Ozan reminded that would not affect how he reviewed the case. My decision is not based on emotion. Rather, this decision is based on the facts as they have been investigated and reported to me. Ozan says the facts from hundreds of documents, interviews, videos, photos, and reports showed three 911 calls from Willie Street, saying Tony Robinson was on drugs and attacking multiple people. It was reported Tony was tweaking, chasing everybody, and is really outrageous right now. Officer Matt Kenny was told of those facts before he showed up at the home. Hearing a disturbance, he went upstairs, forced entry to the apartment, and announced himself. And someone yelled, well, the police are here. He said Tony Robinson immediately turned the corner and struck him with a closed fist on the left side of his head. Ozan says the attack continued, Kenny fearing for his life, ultimately firing seven shots at close range and killing Robinson. I conclude that this tragic and unfortunate death was the result of a lawful use of deadly police force and that no charges should be brought against Officer Kinney in the death of Tony Robinson, Jr. Now, just within the last hour, the Wisconsin Department of Justice has released all of the investigative documents that were related to the Tony Robinson case online. They have had some issues with people getting access to them because the amount of traffic that they've had on the site today. That website does show evidence, does show that Officer Kenny did have a concussion as part of his injuries that he sustained in that incident, but that's part of a large amount of evidence that is there online, and the public can now review what Ozan had to review before he made this decision today. All right, Jessica, live downtown. Thank you very much. Now, our team has been live on Willie Street throughout this announcement today. Matthew Simon is still there, where he's sharing words from Tony Robinson's family. But first, let's go to Valina Jones, who followed a march of Robinson supporters from Willie Street up to the state capitol. Valina? Yeah, Eric and Michelle, right now we are stopped on West Doty Street where um, demonstrators are kneeling in prayer right now and taking a time out to speak about Tony Robinson and their memory of him. Um, right now it's a moment of silence as they are praying um, and stopped on West Doty Street. They have not yet made it to the capitol. Um, again, saying a few words about Tony Robinson and again I'm um, saying a prayer for him right now so after this they're expected to, to continue to walk towards the Capitol but have not made it there um, expected to make a few comments here at Doty Street and then continue on all right Valina we may check in with you a little bit later in this newscast thanks for that well let's turn to Matthew Simon who has more from Tony Robinson's family Matthew Hi there, Eric and Michelle. Willie Street back to normal now, but that was not the scene about 4.30 this afternoon. The intersection behind me, that's Ingersoll right there, shut down. Protesters were in the street lying down with so much emotion. And then the family spoke. So many emotional moments 
from them as well. Tony Robinson's family coming out about 20 minutes after they had planned to. Their new attorney saying they had received so much information they did not have time to review it. And then the family started talking and what we heard was a very different story from Ishmael Ozan, a very different story in their view of what the district attorney had said. They think that Officer Kenny had created a confrontation and did not understand what he had, why he had fired so many shots when he was outside the house. The most emotional moments coming from Robinson's grandmother, Sharon Irwin, who called Ozan's view today politics, not justice. I will miss him the rest of my life when you guys go home and you don't deal with this anymore. This is a forever thing with me. And Robinson's uncle, Turin Carter, did speak briefly, saying the DA's view there's not enough evidence to take this to court has nothing to do with Officer Kenny's guilt or innocence. Before the family walked along Wildy Street, surrounded by hundreds of supporters, they sent a message to those supporters saying they wanted them to vent their frustrations and anger, but they always, as they headed toward the Capitol, wanted them to remain peaceful. That has been a consistent message from the Robinson family. A very important message indeed. Matthew Simon along Williamson Street tonight. Matthew, thank you. The Boys and Girls Club President Michael Johnson has really been a voice for the community and an advisor to the Robinson family. And just moments after the DA's announcement, Michael Johnson called for calm. The district attorney um, laid out uh, what the facts are. I think the community will get an opportunity uh, to uh, review those facts. And I think um, the dialogue now starts. I just hope that as we, um, as a community, respond, that we um, make sure that we respond with peaceful uh, intentions. Also, the head of the Wisconsin Professional Police Association called today's decision appropriate. Dave Delosier just spoke with Jim Palmer and is live in downtown Madison with more tonight, Dave. Yeah, Michelle, you know, up until today, all there was was speculation about what happened in that stairwell that night between Tony Robinson and Officer Matt Kenny. The, the DA today put that speculation to rest. The investigation showed Kenny, a 12-year veteran of the Madison Police Department, shot Robinson after he was assaulted. Officer Kenny, according to the report, was punched in the head by Robinson. Kenny fell backward lost his balance and feared uh, and painted a picture of a struggle in that stairwell and the fear by Kenny that he might lose his gun to Robinson and his life. It was a very harrowing experience and a, a very a tragic outcome, um, even though today is the right result, and legally speaking, uh, it's, it still doesn't change the fact that today is a, a tragic outcome, not only for the Robinson family, um, uh, but for Matt Kenny, um, but also for this community and how we deal with this going forward. And, you know, to answer your question, Officer Kenny is looking forward to going back to work. He is uh, very deeply committed to serving this community. This is his calling. This is something he loves to do. And uh, I know he's eager to get back to uh, doing the job he loves. Now, how, how quickly exactly that will happen remains to be seen. There's obviously the possibility of a civil suit. Uh, the criminal uh, possibility obviously was taken off the table today by, by the DA Ozan, but the uh, civil law lawsuit still is a possibility. And exactly what capacity he returns to the Madison Police Department also remains to be seen. Eric and Michelle, back to you. All right, Dave, thank you very much. And Madison police officers face serious threats today. Our News 3 investigative reporter Adam Schrager broke this story this afternoon. And he joins us from the News Center with the very latest on that story, Adam. Eric and Michelle, members of Madison's Common Council found out about the threats in an email today from Madison Police Department Captain Kristen Roman. She's the community outreach coordinator for the department. She's the link to the city's alders. Her note reads, quote, we have received information from reliable sources that threats to shoot and kill officers have been made. One such threat involves purported statements from gang members slash associates that they intend to riot immediately following the DA announcement and that threats to attack and to kill the first cop seen have also been levied. Police Chief Mike Koval said his department receives threats with these kinds of events and while they will vet anything serious, they can't be paralyzed by this kind of response. You take those things with a grain of salt because in fact they're being vetted from throughout the country. We've seen this play out. Sometimes they're real and measured. Other times they're more open-ended and obtuse. So we'll just take those and develop those intels as those leads would dictate and then deal with them specifically. But we don't want to be alarmist about that because that isn't the kind of way we police. 
Captain Roman's email also detailed how Madison police will handle protesters to the DA's decision going forward. Resisting police will no longer simply be defined by physical combative action, but also by what she called passive responses like going limp and refusing to move. She asked the Alders to share that information with those they know who may be participating in any protests coming up. All right, good information there. Adam Schrager reporting for us tonight in the News Center. Adam, thank you. Thank Our you. team coverage of the Tony Robinson shooting continues next on News 3 at 6. Our WISC TV legal expert joins us straight ahead. Stay with us. You're watching Eric Franke and Michelle Lee. Meteorologist Gary Canalti. And Jay Wilson with sports. This is News 3 at 6. Continuing coverage of our top story, the decision from Ishmael Ozan not to pursue charges against Officer Matt Kenny for the shooting death of Tony Robinson. Attorney Chris Van Wagner has been providing us with legal expertise throughout the day and rejoins us now. Chris, thanks for being here again. Thanks for having really me. really appreciate it. Uh, first off, your general thoughts on the legal process that took place here for DA uh, Ishmael Ozan. Well, he was very detailed in his explanation. I think that was unexpected. He he told people he was making a decision based upon whether or not he could prove the case at trial. That's the right decision. I'm a defense attorney. I would normally be locking heads, locking horns with him, but I always want my clients not to be charged unless there's evidence to convict them at trial. So he said that was his legal standard, and he stuck with it. The process from here is different, but up until now, he's been right up front about what he did, whether people are happy or not. Well, what did you think about his process of how, the, you know, he took 20 minutes when he started before he made that final decision, made a lot of very important points? Well, I think the most important thing he did was this. He told everybody his story so that they knew he did not come to the table with the kind of bias that somebody else might. He said, I have lived this life. I know racial discrimination. I am aware of the disparities in our own Dane County system. And he therefore established credibility by pointing that out. He's, he's a biracial man, and he said so. And so people looking at his decision cannot say he doesn't know what a young black man goes through. He went through it and that gave it credibility. One last question. Yeah. Some people on social media said that the DA criminalized Tony Robinson today by going through all that evidence. Was that necessary, and if so, why? If, if they view it as criminalization, they're making a mistake, and I understand it, but it's really simple. He had to explain what, a, what an on-the-street officer faced in the moment. It's facts and criminalization. Uh, one more thing, uh, just to add to it. You heard Dave Delosier talk about the possibility for a civil suit. How does that change? I know we, we seem to see this with every case that a civil suit could follow. Well, I think what the next step is they may well ask the U.S. Justice Department and, mm -hmm. and the U.S. Attorney in Madison to look at it, and they will. They did with the uh, Heimsmith case. Right. And then they can bring a lawsuit, and they can do what happened in the O.J. case. They can, years later, take depositions of every witness involved and, and find out what they can find out. It will. I have no doubt it will follow. All right. Well, Chris Van Wagner, we appreciate your legal help with us today. Uh, thank you so much. for Glad being to part be a service. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, UW, by the way, is offering a place for its students to come together. We know a discussion is being held at the Red Gym right now, and at 8.30, a vigil is planned outside uh, the pres ha president's house. That's on the 700 block of State Street. And Madison College will host an open venue tomorrow as well. Counselors will be there to help anyone looking for support after the decision today. There will be discussions from 10.30 a.m. to 1.30 tomorrow, and it will be at several of the college campuses, including both the downtown and South Madison locations. All right, we do have some other things to talk about today. Turning to our weather, you will want to cover any flowers that you got for Mother's Day. Now we're going to get some cool temps overnight. Gary Canalti next with just how chilly it'll get. That's next on News 3 at 6. Thank you for choosing News 3, the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association's Station of the Year. Social Digital Media Operation of the Year and News Operation of the Year. After a day of clouds, even a couple of sprinkles, sun is starting to appear as the storm system moves away from us. You can see this invisible cloud track, the blanket of clouds that's been over us most of the day, now starting to give away some sunshine over southwestern parts of the state. It's actually warming temperatures up a little bit, and our temperatures may go up another degree or two, but then we'll start to fall and actually be colder for tonight because of the skies clearing. So a frost advisory has been issued for all of uh, south central and southeastern Wisconsin, basically from Madison and Dane County and areas to the north and to the east 
east. This runs from 7 uh, from midnight until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Time lapse from our WIC Skycam looking off toward the east shows the blanket of clouds, but with time you can start to see some sunshine starting to appear between the clouds and the live view from our Skycam actually showing a little bit of sunshine. Live view from the Edgewater Skycam shows some sunshine as the boats start to line up on the southern end, southern end of Lake Mendota. The high today only 52 after starting out at 45 and right now we're sitting at 50 degrees with mostly cloudy skies although a few peaks of sun coming through. Winds out of the northwest at 13 miles per hour. As we look at temperatures they're in the 40s in the northern part of the state around 50 here again that's where the sunshine is occurring. Temperatures closer to the mid 50s over southwestern Wisconsin. With time the low clouds will lift to the north and east and then we'll look for some clearing to come in. Next storm system gathering in the southwestern part of the country will eventually impact us with warmer conditions toward the end of the week and also a chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Weak cold front dropping southward will also help to drop temperatures a little bit more for tonight. So while temperatures are in the 40s and 50s here, you can see where the sun is shining. They're mainly in the 60s and 70s and by tomorrow morning, temperatures should be in the 30s through much of Wisconsin. So cold enough for at least some patchy areas of frost, especially in low-lying areas. Highs tomorrow though should rebound back into the lower 60s. Forecast includes that frost advisory again from Dane County areas to the north and east from midnight till 7 a.m. Low of 35 here in town with partly cloudy skies and some patchy frost, but tomorrow will be a sunny and not as chilly day. High temperature back up at 63. Not mild. I mean, we should be around 70 degrees, but you can see as the skies clear out on Super Resolution Future Track, those temperatures dropping well into the 30s overnight. Then for tomorrow with bright sunshine, temperatures should get back up into the low to mid 60s. Tomorrow night, we'll see partly cloudy skies, so it won't be as cold. And the next weather system will start bringing some showers or thunderstorms in here by Thursday afternoon. They'll end on Friday. Highs 60s on Thursday, but into the 70s on Thursday or on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. I'm looking for highs close to 80. Chance for a shower or thunderstorm Saturday. Better chance Sunday. Showers will end on Monday. We'll turn a little cooler for next week, but uh, much more typical spring forecast once we get past tonight. Well, maybe just tonight cover those flowers a little bit. Probably need to. In jeopardy. All right. Gary, thanks. You're welcome. Students broke out of the classroom today and explored the outdoors. <laughs> All right, well, Lincoln Elementary teamed up with Dean Clinic in St. Mary's for a fun run plus a Zumba lesson. Fourth graders learned about healthy snacks and even got to take home some seed packets so that they could grow their own healthy food. Good job getting outdoors. Packer fans, they're outdoors. Line it up out the door at Lambeau Field to honor Brett Favre. That story coming up in sports. And now, News 3 Sports. It's the hottest ticket in Green Bay, and it went on sale today. Packer fans started lining up before sunrise to be able to purchase tickets to the July 18th viewing party on the big screens at Lambeau Field for Brett Favre's induction to the Packers Hall of Fame. Tickets are only $4 a piece, and you know how many have been sold so far? 64,000 to watch on a big screen. Brewers are getting ready to play the Chicago White Sox again at Miller Park just after 7. Chris Sale against Mike Fires tonight. Last night, Elian Herrera's two-run homer in the bottom of the eighth gave the Brewers the lead for good and a 10-7 win over the Sox. That means Craig Council is 5-3 and three as Brewers manager. And the Brewers aren't the worst team in baseball anymore, at least by comparing fewest wins. Philadelphia, Colorado, and Cleveland have only 11. Last night, the Brewers got number 12. So things are getting better. Baby <laughs> steps, Jay. Baby <laughs> steps. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Michelle Carolla. Tonight on Fox 47, we'll continue to follow up on the community's reaction to the announcement with no charges being filed against Officer Matt Kenny. Plus, how Taekwondo instructor can help bring the lessons of confidence to help kids not become victims of bullying. That is all coming up first on Fox tonight at 9. Well, Michelle, thank you. And recapping today's breaking news, Dane County District Attorney Ishmael Ozan will not charge Madison Police Officer Matthew Kenny in the shooting death of Tony Robinson. Ken Kenny shot and killed Robinson in March. Since then, protests have popped up in the Madison community. Ozan says Robinson was shot seven times within three seconds and determined Kenny followed state laws for officer-involved deaths. Uh, determined, excuse me, Robinson's mother says she's not surprised but thinks the investigation wasn't thorough enough and a change coming from Madison Police. They tell our Dave Delosier tonight that they will only cite nonviolent protesters tonight. The original plan was to arrest them, but now they are just going to cite them. Of course, stay with us as we continue our coverage online on News 3 at 10 o'clock. And a final weather recap from Gary, a frost advisory overnight. Yeah, most of our area under a frost advisory, including Dane County and Madison and areas to the north and to the east. Uh, the extended forecast looks for highs back in the 60s for tomorrow and Thursday, 70s on th uh, Friday, and then close to 80 for Saturday and Sunday. Chance for a shower or thunderstorm Saturday. Better chance on Sunday and then a little cooler as we head into next week. All right, okay. Gary, thank you very much. And uh, 
You got Brewers trying to do it again tonight. Okay, you're going to see uh, James O'Craig, number one team in the state. And that's Division one too. All right, highlights at 10. Folks, thanks for joining us for News 3 at 6. We hope you have a great evening. This is a WISC TV3 editorial with editorial director Neil Heinen. It is difficult to walk out of District Attorney Ishmael Ozan's news conference believing that his decision to not charge Officer Matt Kenny with a crime in the death of Tony Robinson is just. And we do believe it is just. And then see the grief, anger, and deep worry on the faces of Robinson's family, friends, and supporters. It is, in fact, heartbreaking. But only by accepting both realities can we truly achieve justice. Ozan's explanation of his decision was thorough, conclusive, heartfelt, and inescapably personal. We respect it and we trust it. But the response, including anger, is justified too. While Officer Kenny is not guilty, the system is. And there is injustice in racial achievement gaps, employment and income gaps, law enforcement and incarceration disparities. And Tony Robinson's death is surely a symbol of those injustices. At Tuesday morning's Black Leadership Council news conference, one speaker called for the results of this day to be a catalyst for permanent change. That is the justice and the justification we all seek.